I think most of you are probably not going to be in a bad situation. I took a quick peek, you know, as you guys were answering the questions. You know, I think most of you got, you know, a few que- at least a few questions right. Uh, some questions are harder, uh, and some questions are easier. The first two questions are basically the bulk of the exam. The first question being a trace. The second, ex- the second question being a pre and post condition thing. Um, the last two questions carry less points or fewer points. Question number three is a 10-point question. It is a, it's a different test case of the same algorithm as in question number one. And that one is a much shorter trace, if you guys have noticed. Yeah, it's like, well, I'm not quite sure that's the answer. But it is the answer. <laughs> okay? So that was an easy one. I just want to see if people understand you know, what conditional statements can do. Okay? So that one was really easy. You know, if you get that one, 10 points, just like that. The last one, you know, is a little bit harder. So basically, they kind of balance out each other. You know, one is really easy, and the other one is testing: Can you reason your program backwards? Okay, when you encounter an assignment statement that is not reversible. Okay, because you know what you need to do is to say, well, you know, I cannot say anything about um, the value of the variable before this line. Because once it is a reversible, op- ir- re- irreversible operation, there's no way to flip back and say, okay, it used to be this value, so you would have lost it already. Okay, so there's nothing you can say about, you know, some two. There's nothing you can do about, you know, there's nothing you can say about two of the variables because they have assignments where the right hand side does not refer to the left hand side. Okay, so we'll get to that part too. So I'm jumping ahead of myself here. <clears throat> the first thing is, you know, when you take a test like this, when I say download this file, I mean download the file and not click it to open it from the browser. <laughs> okay, because if you click it and open it from the browser, it will be opened in a read-only fashion. And when you have it read, you know, open in a read-only fashion, you won't be able to make changes. Okay, I just did, you know, a click, and you can see that, you know, it opens the file just fine but it is considered read only. Okay, so that's one thing that you guys have to remember is, you know, don't do that in your next exam or the final exam. You know, use the save as feature to save the file first. Now, if you do open the file like what I just did and it opens up as read only, you can always go to file, yep, and then click save as, and that means, you know, you can save the file at that point so that the file is no longer read only. Now, when you click Save As, one thing you have to remember is where are you going to save it to, okay? Because, you know, you can keep editing the file, you know, giving me your answer, but if you, don't, if you do not remember where you saved it and you close the application, then, you know, <laughs> then you have to spend some time to look for it. So it depends on your browser, it depends on your operating system, depends on many factors. But you, one thing you can do is to save it just to the desktop, you know, which is the easiest place, you know, to find stuff especially when your desktop is relatively clean to begin with at the lab. You know, I cannot say the same thing about, you know, your, you know, the desktop of your home computer. Some people that I know fill up the entire desktop with icons. I have no idea how they can find anything. Yep. That's me. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> you can find stuff too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my desktop usually has nothing on it, you know, except for the trash can, because I normally open up you know, so many windows, so the desktop is no longer visible anyway. So I have to do everything by the start menu, you know, to open up new windows, new terminals, and whatnot. But anyway, <clears throat> okay, here's the algorithm. The algorithm says, you know, if x is greater than y, then do this loop here. Um, there's an assignment statement after the loop. Okay, I hope you guys did not miss that one. And there's a you know and if at the very end. So in this case we have a nested statement, except the conditional statement is on the outside, the loop is on the inside. Okay. And then you have to read the question carefully because you know the question says sheet one has the pseudocode, use sheet two to trace the algorithm and assume x equals three fifty, y equals three forty before the algorithm starts. If you think the code results in an infinite loop, indicate so and explain why. Upload the finished 
file via the interface shown below this text, which is this part here, or actually it's right here. Okay. Any questions at this point? I do not understand why Firefox you know, has been crashing a lot in the lab you know, when people try to upload. I reported this to the lab technicians and they're going to look into it. Um, the thing is, you know, this is the first time you know, people use Moodle in the lab extensively. Um, and you know, so the bug probably was there, has been there for a while and people just never noticed you know, there's a problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. First thing is to use you know, window, new window, so you can have two windows. Just like that. And then you use sheet two. Now this time I do not give you a template to begin with because I did not give a template to my other classes to begin with. The other two classes are less fortunate in a way than you guys because they have to do everything on paper. You know, because we have, to we have to take the test entirely offline with those two other classes. The lab does not have enough room to fit the classes you know, during their time. So you guys are quote unquote fortunate because you can actually do it over at the lab. Doing it online has certain challenges too. You know, you have to deal with the Moodle interface. You don't know how to download the files, save as, so you can actually work on it and stuff like that. But I think in the end, it saves you time. You know, so it's a it's an advantage. You can also search for material a little bit more easily. You know, when you have online resources, you can go back to the notes. Um, you know, with the offline version, they have to remember to print out everything and bring it with them. You know, into the exam, and if they forget something, you know. There's no way to get it back. Okay, so now we are you know, going to work on the trace. Now, when you work on the trace, you need one column for comments. Basically, you know, what are the conditions when you evaluate conditions of a loop or a conditional statement. You have line number to indicate, okay, which line are we talking about? And then you have one column per variable, okay? But tech, you never really talked about the standards and you know how we are supposed to trace algorithms. Well, how many times have we done it? Quite a few. And also the um, the introduction to the exam itself also has a full explanation of what I'm expecting from a trace. You know how what kind of columns I'm expecting, what kind of rows I'm expecting, and so on. So all that stuff is actually well documented in you know, before and also during the exam. We have a pre-line to indicate the precondition. In this case, the precondition, and obviously I have forgotten already, is 350 and 348. So 350, 348, just like that. And let's see, I need to open up the other window to look at this code at this point. Now we start with line one. Line one is a conditional statement or the first line of a conditional statement. So we have to evaluate the condition. X is greater than Y is true at this point because 350 is greater than 348. Then we move on to the next line. The next line is line two, which is the first line of a loop. So that means we have to indicate whether that condition is true or not. Y is less than X is true, okay? Then we move on to line three because the condition of a loop is true. On line three, all we are doing is adding one to y. Y goes from 348 to 349. Then where do we go? Back to two. And then we ask or answer the question again. Y is less than x is still true. Then we go into the loop again, go to line three, and it's going to add one to y again. Y becomes 350. Then we go back to line two y is less than x is finally false, so that we get out of the loop. Is there anything else for me to do after the loop? We do have line five, okay, so don't forget line five. Line five, for some reason, just wants to overwrite the value of x with 10. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Did, did, you, did someone miss that? If you miss this part here, it's not going to be a lot of points, but there will be some points deducted, you know, because of missing that. Um, what do we do after line five? We are done. Okay, there's nothing to do after line five. Yes. Do you get points if I write down like three fifty or three sixty? Right. 
You mean like you know all these lines? Yeah, that's fine. You can, in other words, you 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 backfill all these cells with the values, right? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, this is just my shorthand. I mean, it's, uh, I'm just being lazy, and not to rewrite the values. Okay. Any other questions about this particular one? So when you're all done, make sure you save the file first. I would even close the application before I upload the file, just to be sure that you know it's not causing problems. So close and close. Then I use the upload interface here. Go to the desktop which where I saved it. Double click the file, say open. And now whenever you click on the next question or if you click save without submitting, it will you know upload the file automatically. So you can either click a second question or any of the questions or click save without submitting, it will automatically save the file already. It will upload the file. So in this case, you know, I'll be brave and just click question number two without even clicking save without submitting. Yep. Um, what, like, is the, it doesn't have an else, so it's like, is that fine in writing it? Like, yeah, it just does not have, the, like, what would you do? Just say anything then? Yeah. Okay. If it does not have an else, that means you know if the condition is false, there's nothing so to do. It, 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 I, just, I talked myself into the, like replacing tin as the else without it being else because I was looking for an else and all that. Happened. Oh no, no, you know th there are conditional statements without the else. Yep. Okay, so anyway, I just went to question number two and went back to question number one, and you can see that it is already uploaded. And if you want to continue to work on the question, you can download this file and then work on it some more and then turn it in again. Okay, so this is you know, almost exactly the same as the, in the homework interface where you can upload the file and then you can download your own file back to continue to work on it. But you have to remember to upload it again once you work on it again. Okay, this is question number two, which is you know, working out the uh, pre and post conditions. In this one, you know, it's really not tricky at all. You know, I you know I did not try to make it tricky. It's a fairly standardized, you know, conditional statement with a condition, with a something to do for the then part, something to do for the else part, and nothing is truly tricky. You know, here, um, one uses the substitution rule because the right hand side is reversible. The other one has to use the uh, forget rule because the right hand side is not uh, undoable. So I'll just go ahead and write out, you know, if I were to answer this question, you know, how I would do this. So pre-1 is given already, but I would write it down anyway, you know, just so that, you know, I know what I'm starting out with. Um, and you can also see that I remind you guys, you know, what you need to do and a recommended order of doing that. Um, so pre-2, pre-4, post-2, post-4, and post-5. You can change the order a little bit. You can do pre-2, post-2, pre-4, post-4. That's the other way to do it, okay? But otherwise, you know, I would just do it, you know, the same way as I recommend to myself. So pre-2 is pre-1 and the condition being true. So I would put it like this. And then I will say, what is pre-1? Well, pre-1 is x equals p. Now, this is also something that you guys can you, this is why you have an advantage because you can copy and paste. My you know, other two classes, since it's paper-based, they have to write everything. They, there's no copy and paste. <clears throat> and there's nothing you can simplify at this point. You know, all it is saying is you know, P, what it really is saying is P is greater than Y, but you don't have to you know, state that P is greater than, excuse me, P is greater than Q, um, but there's no, no need to state that. Okay, sorry? Well, remember, I will, you know, assign partial.